Hey YouTube, my name is Jeff, and welcome to episode 2 of the Jensen Walker miniseries. In the previous episode, we went over the CAD model of the Walker and talked about some of the issues that had to be overcome when making something like this. After countless hours of printing legs and other parts for this amazing model, the Walker is finally completed. As you can see, it came together quite nicely, and when the motor is switched on, it starts walking. Today, I have Brooks here with me, the other person who worked on this model. He will be joining us to talk about the process of assembling this Jensen Walker. Brooks, take it away. Okay, so there are, there are a few really interesting design principles that came into play in this walker. Primarily reducing friction. Since we're using a very small motor to drive the whole thing, one of the big things that we had to worry about was just finding as many places in the system as we could to reduce friction. Basically what we did was we took the, the large um, knuckles at each of the joints, which were that size so that there would be very little wiggle in the legs, which was one of the problems that plagued the first iterations and we stuck nylon washers in recessed divots in the legs, and that made the joints spin much more smoothly on each other, even when they were compressed fairly tightly. Additionally, the first version used cheap nylon hardware, nylon nuts, nylon bolts to prototype with, and we replaced those with much higher quality stainless steel screws and lock washers so that we could tighten them down to a known tightness and they would stay there even when the joints were spinning. Because we broke one of the rules of design, we used screws as axles. In most cases, it's not a very good idea, but in this case, it actually worked out fairly well because it was a fairly simple model. One of the other things we had to deal with a lot was that the only tool we had available to us to build and basically design this entire thing was a MakerBot Rep2. So all of the parts in there had to go through several iterations for us to get the basically incorrectness to the correct level in each of the parts. Like all of the screw holes are a third of a millimeter too large. All of the washer holes are about the same and that sort of thing. It's basically just an iterative process that you have to be aware of when you're going into designing anything with moving parts, especially when you need to deal with um, friction like we did in this case. The other major thing is we moved the battery pack to be external and held in your hand, which had two main advantages. The first was that it offloaded about 40% of the weight of the entire thing, just off into your hand, which made it run a lot more smoothly. Kind of cheating, oh well. It also gave us the distinct advantage of having an off switch, <laughs> which wasn't attached to the walker, um, which is very nice. It's sort of like an emergency stop button, which you should always have. That's basically it. Thank you, Brooks, for joining us today at 3D Workshop and talking about your awesome Jensen Walker. To all you viewers, thanks again for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome 3D modeling and printing videos.